Hey guys, Shadow Strader here, and in today's video, I will be talking to you about upcoming changes to Dauntless. Before I start, I would like to warn everyone watching and listening that I will be talking about both information from Phoenix Lab and speculations from my side. I do not want to clickbait anyone in watching the rest of this video, so have in mind that there will be speculations from my side, my opinion on some of the stuff. Secondly, the information is not very in-depth and mostly over the top improvements to the game that they will be doing in the coming weeks, as well as balance changes and new additions to the game as weapons, mechanics, behemoths, cosmetics and systems. Again, if you're expecting me to give you a full, detailed and 100% correct information about what and when is going to happen with the game in the coming weeks and months, turn this video off or go search in the web yourself because I cannot guarantee that everything I say and give you information about will happen for sure. I will give you the information as I have read it and give you my thoughts and opinion about it. If you're not happy with that, then by all means do not ever watch of my videos again, but if you are, then I'm grateful for your attention and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Let's begin then. I will timestamp this video in 4 sections according to the way Phoenix Labs also split the information, so they will be. Part 1 Patch 0.4.4 Changes Part 2 Patch 0.4.5 and Patch 0.5.0 Changes Part 3 Changes coming based on player feedback and Part 4 General future updates and plans for the game Links to the information and roadmap are down below in the description for you to check yourself Considering Phoenix Lab announced that the new major patch will be coming around in mid-August and now that we have two patches in between it, I presume that this big patch will be 0.5.0 and we will get 0.4.4 and 0.4.5 in the coming weeks before it. I might be wrong about this, but usually big patches change the second number while major game updates change the first and minor ones the third number. If what I speculate is correct, we will get patch 0.4.4 in a week or two. So what can we expect from that patch? Firstly, pylons will be deployed faster in the game. I currently do not use pylons and have no idea how fast they deploy, but apparently they should be put up faster, so this is something you should expect. Secondly is the biggest and most important change for me and for anyone farming or Zachary. His limb toughness is going to be changed. I hope they lower the toughness rather than increase it. It is not stated which one of the two will be happening, but considering players are having a tough time taking them out, I presume the developers will give us a better time farming those. We will however see how this goes, but I bet my account that they will make them a lot easier to farm. Tragic Echo is also going to get a bit of tuning. What they mean by this is unknown, but I presume they will firstly fix it so that it works with the hunger and secondly, I think they might lower its bonus since currently it is way too overpowered and combined with Shroud Axis, you can solve anything in less than 2-3 minutes. This might be a letdown for many of you, so I suggest you farm and use the method while you still can. Percentage modifier stacking and balance is the fourth change coming. I presume this is going to be the fix to Eater Hunter, Rage Hunter and Pacifier stacking and having the same effects. I cannot think what else they could mean by this, if you guys have other ideas, please share them down below, but I think this is the main idea to fix. Currently everyone tries to build around this bug build, so they should have fixed it a while ago. Airstrike Beacon is going to get a more accurate deployment. I have never ever used Airstrike Beacon because I find it useless, but that's just me. Considering they are fixing it, it must have been having issues and I might test it and see what they are going to do about it. Elemental effect triggers are going to change. This is regarding the elemental effects of the Slayer's weapons, not the Behemoth elemental attacks. I can only speculate that they will change the thresholds or add another way of applying the elemental effects. At the moment, the way it works is the same as stagger damage. You have to reach a certain damage cap with elemental damage in order to apply your weapon's debuff. The thing is, you do not see elemental damage when you apply it, so it's sometimes hard to know how much more you need to do. I hope they add some sort of visual effects or other form of way to understand if you're getting closer to applying the different effects. From what is written though, they will be making elemental effects application change based on number of hits rather than damage thresholds, so this will make faster weapons more useful compared to slower ones when talking about elemental application. 
Medic perk is going to get nerfed. To be honest, it is way too overpowered at the moment and needs a little tuning down. Having a 6 of 6 plus medic gets you up at full health, so technically you can just ignore health potions, eat their heals and save everything for when the danger rises to maximum, which rarely happens in the first place if you are a bit careful even in the end game content. New partner flares will also be available soon. Shroud and Zachary will be removed from the heroic patrols in order to make farming them easier. I mean farming the heroic patrols, not the end game bosses. I agree with this change since for me Shroud and Zachary were a tier of their own, what I call tier 7 in Dauntless. Tier 6 is the heroic maelstrom and tier 5 is the normal one, so they should split them up nicely. You will now be able also to browse, craft and equip from the same menu rather than from different ones. 10 out of 10 for this change because it's very useful if you ask me personally. Quests will be tuned down and rebalanced, also the requirements for the Behemoth Lantern quests will be changed. Finally, we will be getting new technical and performance updates and fixes alongside other unspecified fixes to the islands and Ramsgate. I think they will finally fix the climbing and invisible roofs in the game since many people are having fun exploiting that and running around the sky. Or we might instead get more rooftop access and more building rooms in Ramsgate. Who knows? Now, let's move on to patch 0.4.5 and patch 0.5.0. The information regarding these two is mixed, so I will mention it all together and speculate which one is going to be in which part. The new behemoth and new weapon are going to be coming with patch 0.5.0. I am almost 100% sure about this. Also, some extra information about the weapon is that it will be a fully ranged one, so I was correct in my previous video. Woohoo for Dauntless Ranged Slayers. Secondly, we are apparently getting grenades added to the game, but I have no idea if they will be consumables like airstrike or lanterns. I hope they are fun and useful. From what I read, they will be different grenade types with different effects so it's possible for them to be either lantern slots or consumable slots. There will be new island points of interest added, which I presume will be in patch 0.4.5, alongside the new cell vendor that we are getting. The technical fixes and performance fixes will probably come out also in patch 0.4.5, alongside the networking updates and the network scaling. We will be getting new factions and reputation tracks which we have no information on what they will be yet and probably are gonna come in 0.5.0 alongside the new daily hunts, new quests and the new islands which are logical to come with the new behemoth and the new weapon altogether. What is going to be happening based on player feedback? Currently the following things are being investigated. Tragic echo display bugs when you apply different dice to it and causing it not to appear correctly. Wounding behemoths will be changed a bit since currently there is an inconsistency to applying wound effects which is not always rewarding and it should be. Soul playing will get further balancing, 100 points to Phoenix Lab for this since they are trying to stimulate both solo and team play in the game. Chainblade's iframes are getting improved since according to the devs, Mobility is at the heart of the chain blades. The god hand bugs are still being investigated, so it might take a while for it to be fully fixed. The following changes are already in progress. Fixing how players are routed to the correct servers. This is a major issue for some players since it's not nice to be from Australia and playing on the EU server and vice versa. The game should send players to correct servers and let them play together a top quality connection regardless of their current location. Slayer Collision is getting fixed since it causes so many problems when you sometimes get near another player. You can get as far as literally getting stuck in one place because of player collision. Helion and Stormclaw are getting rebalanced. Apparently the majority of people found them extremely hard so they will be getting rebalanced and changed without removing the challenging part but making them less frustrating when going against. Weapons are getting further balancing to make them more unique and fun. Nothing much to say about this except that we will wait and see what they bring. Finally, we have the future plans for the game. First one sounds amazing, we are getting aerial combat. The devs literally wrote, let's put the jump button to use. What this means, I have no idea, but I sure as hell am hoping for jump attacks and using the jump key 
for avoiding attacks and dodging rather than only climbing the islands. A seventh weapon is already in development and also will be getting new combo variations. At this stage, the game combos do feel a little short and not versatile enough. I will be happy with more versatility, but newer combos are also something that will fit nicely in the game. New passive fauna will be added to the game, which according to the information is GOATS, which will be interesting. The more cooler thing is the aggressive fauna we are getting. You will no longer have to only worry about the behemoths on the islands. I cannot wait for this since I hope we get some deadly animals and farm materials while searching for the big guys. Ramsgate will get more social activities as well as interactive elements and places to celebrate player achievements. Further new quests and challenges will be coming in future together with new gathering materials and craftable ones. We will be getting set management to organize and use our sets faster and store them rather than manually switching everything each time. Cosmetic pets are also on the horizon in a future update. Guild functionality will be getting an update alongside with new streamer guilds, which will be special functionality for streamers to play with their subscribers. I totally cannot wait for this, which might make me create my own guild in the future. I will have to think about this in the coming months. Lobby banners will be coming while waiting in the airship to show what you have accomplished in the game. The next exotic gear will be from Charok. Whether it will be from normal or firebrand one, what gear will be how you unlock it and what it will do, I have no idea and no info is shared, but we know it will be related to Charok. Finally, I will be ending this video with the two of the biggest announcements from Phoenix Labs. Firstly, Dauntless will be getting a mid-hunt rejoin feature for people who have crashed or disconnected and the game will also be getting a console version. I have no idea when this will happen, but it is written in the roadmap so you can trust the guys at Phoenix Labs that it will be done at some point. This is everything for this video. If you guys and girls enjoyed it, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you want to discuss something, then write me a comment, share the video as you see fit and lastly remember to follow me on Twitch and subscribe here on YouTube for more video game and music content.